and a bid to strengthen reporting and coverage of agricultural and food sectors in sub-Saharan Africa, the Africa Media Initiative, AMI, has ended a three-day training workshop for over 50 journalists across West Africa to further build their journalistic capacity on agricultural reporting. Eric Chinje, the CEO of Africa Media Initiative in Kenya, noted that it is important to improve media content by reinforcing the capacity of reporters to cover development stories and that in the majority of African countries, agriculture accounts for well over 60% of national economic activity and revenue. Yet, the sector gets a disproportionately small amount of media coverage, contributing less than 10% to the national economy and political discourse. Our emergence as a continent that can feed itself, that can sell what it produces, that can generate wealth out of its soil. All of that will only happen, will not happen, without the media playing an, a critical role in the process. But media will not play that role if journalists are largely ignorant about what the sector is all about. Journalists need to understand what the, the various factors that impact on the creation of wealth through agriculture is all about. We have to understand as journalists what climate change does to agricultural development. We have to understand what the policies around um, fertilizers do to agriculture. We have to understand what the fiscal elements are, the financial policies around agriculture. We have to understand the relationship between budgets and agricultural performance. We have to understand the, you know, what it would take to go from elementary, basic, rural farming into industrial farming and agribusiness. These things, some in the media have to understand and, and then curate conversations, moderate conversations around these issues. The Africa Advocacy Officer, Action Aid International, and former coordinator CADEP, non state actors Buba Khan, mentioned that it is very important to get more women into agriculture, taking into consideration the significant role women can play if given the opportunity, and asked that the smallholder women farmers must be celebrated as they can be able to feed the continent. He then said the challenges women farmers do face cut across different African countries. The key is there. They don't have access to credit because credit requires that you have collateral. And to have collateral, you either have to own land or you have to own assets. And most women don't own land in Africa. And uh, the other issue is land access. Many a time, the women are given marginal land. Uh, even if they you know, are cultivating that piece of land for a number of years, one day the landowner will come and claim ownership of the land. So they don't have the right to even invest in those lands because you cannot put perennial crops like fruit trees in a lot that does not belong to you. So what we need is for them to have secure ownership of those lands, what we call tenure rights that need to be secured. And uh, we've also seen instances where by the women, smallholder farmers are marginalized further because uh, we do not take into consideration their own perspective. Because we, call, we have what we call unpaid care work, that women's role in the house is not recognized, it's not redistributed, and it's not also funded. So we feel that it's a woman's role to be in the household. But if you quantify that role, you find out that it's much more than what a man is doing. So if you begin to recognize that in itself, you give them a lot of opportunity for them to be able to engage in other productive activities.
Muchi Yaga, the executive director, local government research institute in Kenya, says journalists need available data to be able to report adequately on stories and said it is important for those that are getting the information to get the appropriate data and hopes that journalists reporting on agriculture across Africa will always consider high quality research and data to add more value to their work. There are um, the problems are on both the supply side and the demand side. Um, we tend to think of supply side as just government, but I think it's both government and uh, 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 non-government um, institutions. And I think the biggest problem when it comes to capacity is whether organizations have the people or the infrastructure to capture and, and, um, and analyze and, and, and use the data uh, that they need. And the second challenge, of course, is when the data is available on the demand side, you know, are you able to use it, are you able to download it, are you able to visualize it, to analyze it. Um, so there's a human capacity challenge and there's also an infrastructure and investment capacity challenge. I think it's, uh, it behoves us as, 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 uh, as, as Africans to make sure that those who are telling our stories have the right data, especially our own media. So um, making sure that data is accessible, information is accessible to our media, it should be a priority for, for, our, for our government. Uh, and there's there's um, two ways to make sure that we can do that, and one one of those ways is uh, opening up data proactively, and the other way is by making sure that we have um, a, a functional, um, world-class access to information legislation. Friday Pei, an agricultural journalist from Zambia, reiterated the importance of professional reporting on agricultural issues. He, however, made mention of the key challenges journalists across Africa do face when it comes to reporting on agriculture. He said, agricultural reporting requires you as a journalist to go out to the field and get the stories. As the farmers will feel more comfortable in giving you more information about their work when they feel as if you're part of them. Out in the field, mingle with the farmers. And most times, you just have to bring yourself to the level of the farmer himself. That way, you easily get information from the farmers. Even the information that they might not easily release, they'll give it to you when you become one of them, when they trust you. So it's about trust, it's about patience, it's about you being ready to do the donkey work, to go out and, and get dirty which of course most young journalists nowadays are not ready to do. They, they would rather be at a hotel with the minister, they would rather be at a press conference where government officials are making pronouncements, this and that. They, they find that to be good journalism for themselves. So it's very difficult for them to take up an area which requires in-depth research because again reading has become reading culture is, is very poor generally in Africa I know where I come from in Zambia the reading culture is not that good especially among young people with Facebook with Twitter now and WhatsApp people spend more time young people even generally spend more time WhatsApping and there's very little time for research they have the gadgets to do research but they are not ready to engage in the donkey work to read the material, synthesize and understand what this is talking about and be able to write good stories based on research information. So I think uh, first is uh, journalism training. We, we need to work on the specialization even within the colleges mm -hmm. where when you go to the university you want to do journalism you specialize to do maybe agricultural, to do environmental or economics uh, journalism. That way it helps you to have very good information. Even as you get out in the field, you already have a background of what you need to do. Secondly, I think it's the issue of finance. Most media houses in Africa are privately owned. Yes, we have government-owned media. But even them, when you talk of funding and this and that, it's, it's an issue of finance. So if uh, we work on the financing modalities, how, where, where media can be able to access good loans, media owners are able to, to be empowered. That way it will, it, will, it will help even their workforce.
to specialize. It was, however, noted that if most West African countries focus on agriculture, then it will create lots of opportunities because it is such a dominant sector. Most of the people involved in agriculture need to be better informed. Various journalists from different African countries made suggestions as to what must be the way forward and the challenges that are visible in various African countries when it comes to agricultural issues and giving it the prominence it deserves. For Star Television News in Freetown, Adam Asila reporting.